Greetings, salutations, peace, and good. Today is Tuesday in the fourth week of Easter, and these are today's scriptural readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them. However, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus, the hand of the Lord, was with them. And a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The Word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, All you nations praise the Lord. All you nations praise the Lord. His foundations upon the holy mountain the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All you nations praise the Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon, among those who know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia. This man was born there, and of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. All you nations praise the Lord. They shall note when the people are enrolled. This man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance, My home is within you. All you nations praise the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Feast of the Dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's said that the longest journey you'll ever make in your life is from your head to your heart. How do we get there? Jesus has an answer in today's gospel. The truth is our head must awaken the passion of the heart. And the truth is that he and the Father are one and love us deeply. In the story, the people are celebrating the Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah, the celebration of lights. Ironically, these people are in the dark, blind to the mystery of Jesus Christ. They want more evidence, a plain sign from God that Jesus is the Christ. They're blind to God's living presence in their midst before their very own eyes. Foolishly, they long for a rational answer of Jesus' identity. We all can have blind spots. The truth confronts us head on, and we can fail to see it or refuse to accept it. Jesus rarely convinces us with logic or argument. Our brains usually fail to stir our hearts. Jesus often chooses to speak in parables, creating images to awake truth in our hearts, giving us deeper, more meaningful signs. Today he continues with the imagery of the Good Shepherd. 
Fittingly, the Spanish word for shepherd is pastor or pastor. Jesus is our pastor and we are his sheep. Like a good shepherd, he watches over us, protects us, leads us to safe pastures. And like sheep, by following the pastor's voice, we are secure and have no reason to fear. Even in times of turmoil, we gain security in the Lord. The early disciples were under assault. They were persecuted for their beliefs. In the Acts of the Apostles, we see that. Despite their toils and troubles, the missionary spirit spreads. Hearts are filled with the spirit. The church blossoms. Spirit rages, but not because of theological discourses, but from a lived communal faith. It's said that the spiritual life is not about climbing the highest mountain to reach up to God, but more about sinking into God from within, feeling his indwelling presence. Faith can never be controlled by sheer thought, no matter how well or how hard we reason. It's about releasing worldly thoughts and daily obsessions and finding the Lord deeply in the moment, opening our hearts to him. Sheep need to hear the voice of the shepherd. We hear better when we listen to scripture, engage in an active and regular prayer life, and share in communal celebration of the sacraments. Now, this last part may be unavailable to us right now, but this too shall pass. We look forward with great anticipation that of this return. And remember, even in tough times, Jesus never abandons us. His presence fulfills us. He delivers eternal life from which we shall never perish. When God is with us, who can be against us? His signs are among us always. We need only to listen for his voice and with open hearts to his grace. Finally, we pray for protection in time of pandemic. O Mary, you always brighten our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus's pain while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving mother, you know what we need, and we are confident you will provide for us as at Cana in Galilee. Intercede for us with your son, Jesus, the divine physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are tending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows so as to lead us through the cross to the glory of the resurrection. Amen. May God continue to bless you and watch over you. Be well.